Inua, A Story in Ice and Time is a mystical point-and-click narrative adventure that really pulled me in and is far more than what I would say the sum of its parts are. It focuses on Inuit culture and has a story that takes place over well over a hundred years. And you have three different generations of characters with three protagonists that you play as or control. And whilst the story is linear and there isn't tons of what I would call quote unquote gameplay going on, it draws you into a really interesting time hopping storytelling that keeps you engaged and interested into a mythical and somewhat ambiguous conclusion that is one of those things where you can make what it, what you want of it by the end. Now, these three different characters all have their own motives and kind of, they're all connected in their own way. In the present day, you have Tyna. Tyna is a reporter who has gone off on an expedition to find out what's happened to the crew of the Terror. The Terror was a ship in the Franklin Expedition who went to go and explore the Arctic in the 19th century, but it mysteriously disappeared and no one could ever find all of the crew available. So she's off to go and explore kind of the heritage and the ship's expected to be found and like raised from the sea. So she's busy exploring that. At the same time, you'll bounce back and forth between her and Simon. And Simon's a sailor from that Franklin expedition who is trying to keep his crew alive, um, not deal with like the mental fatigue of being trapped in the ice for months and months and months on end, uh, and eventually meeting up with the Inuit people and deciding to leave his ship behind and go on a journey with them to try and get back to uh, civilization. So what happens in Tyna's world directly affects what's going on in Simon's world because she'll be saying, oh, I need to find something. I need to try and piece the story together and understand what their next actions were. And then you'll zoom out and be able to swap between the two or swap, sorry, between the two timelines, dive into Simon's timeline and he'll uncover the next bit of the story, which then Tyna can then go, aha. And then when you flick back to her, she'll be able to go, hmm, and this is where I'll go here. Bridging those two timelines is Peter. Now, Peter is in the 1950s, and Peter operates as a filmmaker in the 1950s. And he's on this expedition with this military crew to uncover some kind of mystery that's going on at the same time. Now, the three all kind of interconnect. They're all working towards the same destination in their own interesting and unique way. But... As I say, as one person kind of hits a blocker in one side of their story, you flip to the other, which illuminates what they need to do in the next one, and you dive back and forth, uncovering the story of all three as you go. As this happens, what you'll be doing is poking around and pointing and clicking on various different objects or people on the screen. And I do like the art style of the way how this is all pulled together. It reminds me of... um, the uh, Burly Men at Sea game, actually, if you've played that. Very similar setup and style. And when you click on these different things, someone will talk about it. This is entirely voice acted, although some people do have inner thoughts and they're not voiced. But the way how uh, this works is it then becomes a talkable object or theme for everyone in the chapter of this game, and the six chapters in total. So say you might pick up a campfire, then that might only have interest for like one or two people in the story, but you can click around everyone and get more backstory and more character development about what everyone feels about the campfire. Or it might be that someone's had a little strop and so they become a talking point for everyone else and you get to see what everyone's view is of that specific character or thing. A lot of this is around how the outside world interacts with the Inuit community. And there is a real standoffish of distrust between the two communities and the way how we operate. And initially at the very beginning, totally different languages and people not even being able to communicate properly like that. And seeing this kind of different ways how the outside world deals with the Inuit culture over the span of 
no technology versus starting to get bold about technology and now being very blasé about technology and this is the way of the world. I found just an interesting kind of sub story going on in the background that I'm sure was intentional to be put in there. The graphics are beautiful. The soundtrack is stunning. Now, I'm familiar with Tanya Tag's music outside of this game, and I have a few of her albums, but she's an Inuit throat singer, and they've put her into like a really celestial, mystical background collage of voices and like ambient synths. Ah, oh, I want to buy this soundtrack separately. It's so good. Um, and it feels really ethereal, but otherworldly, but as always with Inuit singing there's this like primal urge that soars through it as well and mm, I love it I'm a, I'm a big fan so yes pick up that soundtrack if you love alternative weird like um, primordial music that feels childlike at the same time now I love 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 the soundtrack the voice acting is a little bit more rough around the edges at times I think this comes down to where you've got real Inuit people doing the voiceovers, which is fantastic, and I applaud that. Uh, they've misread some of the words, or they've been given a slightly different script that's been tweaked compared to what's on the screen, and some of the words don't actually make sense in the sentences that they speak. They also have a very different delivery, the Inuit people, so it's very slow, monotonous, very... Um, downbeat and so when you've got scenes that are trying to inject like mystical drama into something and they're supposed to be chaos you've still got that same slow methodical delivery and it just feels slightly disconnected from a cinematic perspective rather than it being a cultural thing so again I'm someone that watches quite a lot of uh, cinema from around the world and you get used to different cultures having very different delivery methods I think it's just it's uh, emboldened here because you've got some British and Irish people, some American people, and then the Inuits, and there's just there's very different um, delivery methods here. The last thing I'd say is that the story itself is one of those stories that's telling, I believe, a folklore tale that's been handed down through generation and generation. Uh, and it's one of those mystical ones where you kind of go, oh, OK. And then it's given like a present day reimagining, which I really like and I think works very well. But it's a it's the journey, not the destination type of story. So when you get to the end of it, you kind of go, ah, that's nice. But you're not going to have like big bang finale closing down of um, like a nice full circle of story. It's one of those things where you can kind of go away and ponder. And I personally found that for me, the biggest takeaway from the story was less around uh, the actual folklore side of things. I think I could see where that was going quite early on and I got it and I enjoyed it. But it was more around uh, seeing from both sides of the fence how different cultures could potentially live together alongside each other and be much more open and accepting to different ways of life and different styles of life as well. Uh, and there's a real emphasis on what could community look like from different perspectives. Uh, and no one's painted in a particularly good or bad light here. You get the full spectrum of stuff, and I really appreciated that with this game. Um, but it's one of those where I kind of, I feel like I'm going to think about this game long after I've finished it but for some different reasons compared to it being like a mystical adventure. So yeah, written review will be over on highplanegames.com uh, tomorrow. This is out on PC and Nintendo Switch today. You guys take care. bye bye Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higherplanenetwork. Your support makes all the difference, and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.